I grew up in Holland, Massachusetts, and so very small town, like two, three thousand people. My dad was a pastor my whole life, uh, still is a pastor. And so when I was about 12 or 13, I got my first guitar and started writing these really bad songs. Uh, and then, you know, when I was 15, I started this band. Still didn't write the songs. My songs were still bad at 15. And so I was in this band, I sang in it, and we went up and down the East Coast playing a lot of dive bars. I remember my mom would be at some of the gigs, and here's this, her 15-year-old son's playing this bar, and these girls at the bar are trying to buy me shots, and, like, she's just mortified. <clears throat> I think at that moment, she probably had known, okay, this is, this is the life he's, you know, trying to, the music world, he's trying to get in the music world. And so, being in a band for a couple of years, missing a lot of high school, unfortunately, uh, when I was 17, um, I had met Brandon Creed, who now manages Bruno Mars. I met him in New York, because it was close enough to Massachusetts, and he had said, you know, you've got this sound that I think would work really, really well in Nashville. There's a lot of cool things going on in Nashville. And so at 17, I came to Nashville, and I met my producer, Jamie Houston. And at first, we were just writing tunes together, see what was going to come of it, and we ended up writing some really, really cool songs. In fact, you know, one of the first songs we wrote is on the album. And so, you know, making that move from Holland to Nashville was a big jump, it's, you know, quite some distance uh, in between, but, you know, one of the best decisions I've made, because it's really, you know, it's, I can't complain, I'm very blessed in the situation I've had. And when I moved here, I didn't have much. Uh, I had a very small one-bedroom apartment with, a, with another friend of mine. Slept on the floor for like a year and a half, so, you know, but I remember, you know, my dad sitting me down and telling me, Hey, you can't do this from Holland, Massachusetts. You've got to go to Nashville. So at 17 was the time I made that decision and started coming down here and was old enough to get my own place at 18. And so it was, you know, it was definitely a big change and, you know, can't say I'm, I'm mad that I did it. When I met Jamie Houston and him and I were writing these tunes and it's funny because You Can Break a Heart Like That, which is the third track on the album, that's the, one of the first songs we wrote together. It might have been the third or fourth song. I was 17 at the time. For that to make an album that's coming out when I'm 22 is a, you know, I wrote that song five years ago. And it's, you know, that doesn't, I mean, that, that typically happens here in town. And, and so the process of making this record is really, it's a story that tells, you know, my life, you know, it's a, my life story from 16 to 20, um, and we finished up the record about a year and a half, uh, a year and a half, two years ago, and the process for it was cool because when we came here to Show Dog Universal Music, you know, we came with them with a few cool songs, uh, and a couple of them made the record, and you know, we still were loving the tunes that I was writing, and I, it didn't, I didn't mean for it to end up to where I would co-write the whole record with Jamie. But we did it, and we did it with a lot of cool writers here in town. Um, and I learned a lot from those writers, and so the process of this record was great because I was just telling my story. And so for it to come out, you know, at this age, you know, people are going to get to know a part of me musically and also, you know, part of my life through the ages of 17 and 20. So you've got, you know, the diversity of the record is definitely speaks. You know, a lot of people have said that to me, uh, whether it's lyrically, musically, um, and just the, the overall vibe. You know, you got a party song, like If You Want Some, and then you've got, you know, more of a story love song, like Why God Made Love Songs. And so, If You Want Some really is the only party tune on the record, I guess. I mean, there's there's a couple other rowdy tunes and upbeat songs, but I wanted to write those tunes that people listen to in their car from, like, Monday through Friday, you know, like midday, you know, that they're just jamming out to by themselves. You know, those weekend songs are really fun, too, but I wanted to write a record that really spoke to people in different situations, you know, heartbreak, you know, for instance, there's a song on the record called Slow Motion. It's about the first time I was ever intimate with the girl I was seeing. And it was just, you know, it's, I wanted to really expose myself as an artist and, you know, show the diversity of the record and the diversity in me as, a, as an artist. I'm influenced by <clears throat> so many different people, Keith Urban, Tom Petty, uh, the Eagles. Uh, my grandfather always played me Cash, Waylon Jennings, and Merle Haggard. And, uh, 
you know, a lot of the outlaws. And, you know, I was even influenced by people who take chances lyrically. Uh, people like, you know, as far as Nirvana and Eminem, like those people who are just really out there lyrically, but, you know, they take a chance on it, and they're diverse with their music, and so it's, it's inspiring. So Ruby Puts a Red Dress On is probably, um, I believe it's the only track on the tune that's not a personal experience. Uh, however, when I was writing the song, two of my best friends uh, just deployed for Afghanistan. I was writing it with uh, Jamie Houston, Wayne Kirkpatrick, and also a friend of mine had lost his wife a few years prior. And so it was, you know, a lot of different emotions going on. It, you know, it wasn't exactly the uh, greatest time, you know, in, in, in my life. And so, you know, I had to write about it. It's usually what I do. And so <clears throat> someone in the room, I can forget who, you know, I think we just kept saying Ruby, and Ruby puts a red dress on. And then it kind of just came to the story of, you know, Ruby puts a red dress on when she's alone because... In front of her friend, she keeps it together, but it's about this girl who's still holding on to that loved one she lost. And, you know, she may keep it together for her friends and family, but when she's alone, she kind of breaks down and, uh, you know, goes completely vulnerable and puts on this dress to where, like, he always thought she was the prettiest when they were together. And, you know, she listens to their song. And so it's a sad tune, and it's definitely one of my favorite songs I've written just because it's a total outside story. Uh, I love playing it live, and I love the track on it, and it's, you know, for a while it's been my favorite song I've written so far. So this was, I think, the third song I wrote with Jamie Houston, You Can Break a Heart Like That. I also wrote it with Tim Johnson, who recently passed. Um, and I also wrote two other songs with Tim Johnson as well that's on the album, so I'm happy he could be a part of the, this record that's coming out. But anyway, You Can Break a Heart Like That. Yeah, I was 17. Coming to Nashville first or second time and uh, uh, to write, and I had just walked in on my girlfriend I was seeing with a college basketball player. And so, yeah, you know, it's not like one of the greatest things you want to see. And he's like 6'8", and I'm probably 6 feet with a good pair of boots on. But, <laughs> so I knew I didn't really stand a chance in this one. And so I had left two days later to go to Nashville, and Jamie was like, so what's been going on in life? And I'm like, dude, I've got a story for you. And you know, I think it was Tim that coined, you know, you can break a heart like that, man. And then that was it, and it just kind of just started flowing into this song. Yeah, no, Don't Tell Me is really cool, and I'm excited we're going to serious with it. Uh, it debuted on the Heart of Dixie show on the CW. It's my first TV placement. And so Don't Tell Me is a really funny story. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever had uh, a bit too much to drink. And I was a little younger. I was, uh, you know, drinking PBR and a couple shots of Kahlua. So my hangover the next day was just spot on. Uh, and so at the time, I was with my friends and I was back home visiting, and I, I forgot to call my girlfriend because we were supposed to meet up. And I called her like at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. So Don't Tell Me is a very personal uh, story that actually happened to me, and I'm sure it's happened to other guys. So either they can relate to me or they can learn from my mistake. But I'm excited. It's a fun track. Uh, it's a cool little rowdy tune and love playing it live. I said that quote recently because for a long time the only way I really exposed myself as an artist was either on stage or writing songs. And being an artist and, you know, recently growing a fan base that, you know, stays loyal to me, it's like, it goes much further than that, you know, other than just writing the tunes and being on stage. You kind of got to open that raw nerve everywhere. Whether it's in interviews, and I think for the longest time in the beginning, starting out really fresh with my first single, If You Want Some, I'd always try to, like, you know, have all the answers and be super prepared and perfect and on point. And, like, I think it was about a year ago where it's like, I'm not that. I'm not the perfect person. You know, I don't know all the answers. I'm still learning like any other 22-year-old would. Uh, and so... I've been saying that recently because I hate when people try to make you into something you're not. And I think the most important thing for songwriters that are telling their own story is to be open and show that raw nerve because chances are, 
you're not the only one going through crap or through a good time. <laughs> now the experience I want to give the fans, you know, when they listen to this album, I want them to be able to come uh, and hear some of the songs live and be able to join in with me singing it. And you know, our live shows are really, really fun. They're really energetic. We try to keep the beat up, and uh, you know, we're going out on tour with Love and Theft this fall. Uh, for a 30-day tour, and so, you know, I want some fans to show up knowing my tunes, and I think the experience I'd love to give them most is to, one, listen to my record and have them relate to it and, you know, feel something when they listen to it, and two, to come to my show and know that they had a really awesome time, uh, you know, and not let them think about work or anything, but just focusing on a good time with music. Here we go. The end. <laughs>